a rectangular field 3 by 25. So that's our starting point. Let's draw that, get your ruler out. Look, this is 7. So to, you know, to prove to you how important it is to get your ruler out, okay, I'll even get this nasty spider, you know, infested ruler out. And uh, let's, let's draw this thing. Now, it doesn't have to be to scale, okay? But it should be roughly proportionate. Like, I should be able to look at that and think, this is not ridiculous, okay? So, three by... I just heard the question, how big is it supposed to be? Which is an excellent question. Now, being that you've been given a very limited space to work with, okay? Obviously, it can't be huge. I draw the line at, it's too small if you can't write on there any of the information that you need to say about it, okay? So, for example, I'll show you what I mean. Here's my rectangular field, it's three by 25, okay? So, as you can see, my scale is, is off, so I might even say not to scale. Okay. But clearly one of them is 3 and one of them is 25, right? So I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to say this here, this is 3 meters, okay? And then the crossways, I've got 25. Now, yes, question? Um, is, it, is it right to make the right the numbers on the inside or the outside? Okay, now, good question. Now, usually we would write the numbers on the outside. That's sort of the ordinary way to do it. The reason why I know it's probably, in this case, a better way to do it on the inside is because I've read the rest of the question, and it says it's surrounded by a concrete path that's one meter wide, okay? So I'm going to have to put some stuff around this, and if I put the, the length measurements there, it'd sort of get in the way. So that's why I've, I've done that, okay? You don't have to, but I think it's a little neater. Now, what was I saying? Your diagram is too small if you can't write this stuff inside your diagram, right? If there's no space in there, you're like, I can't fit three meters. Then you need to draw that thing bigger, okay? So there you go, there's that path. Then it's surrounded, sorry, that field. It's surrounded by a concrete path one meter wide. So we're gonna go all the way around. Okay. So let's do this. beautiful but it'll do okay um, not necessary but it's nice if you sort of show that this thing on the outside is different in some way so I just shaded mine a little bit so that I could distinguish between the field and the path that's all okay now since I've added on this extra distance right this 25 and this 3 don't apply to the bigger rectangle okay so we actually have different distances around the outside for instance Three up and down here. But how wide's the path on the top and the bottom? It's one meter up and one meter down, right? So that three is gonna become five, right? So that distance there, five meters, okay? In exactly the same way, uh, across the top. Can you see why? It's actually gonna be 27. Can you see why 27? It's 25 plus 1 on this side and 1 on that side. So 25 plus 2 gives you 27. There you go. Okay. Now you didn't have to have every single piece of information there to get the mark. Um, but, like, why do you draw a diagram? The diagram is to help you, right? It's going to make the next part of the question um, so much easier to work out. The next part of the question says, find the area of the path. Now, by the way, this is why that shading business was not necessary at all, but it really does help you work out what the problem is, okay? If we want to work out that blue area, right, you've got your big rectangle that's all the way around the edges, and you want to take away this inside rectangle, the white one, right? And you know how to work out the area of rectangles, so I would set it out like this. This is how you should write it underneath your diagram, okay? Now, we tend to say A for area, right? But try to be a little more specific. There's all these different areas here. Right? So I would go area of the path. A. Okay? So I put that path, um, the technical word is it's a subscript, so it's just underneath. That's what sub means. Okay? Now, I said it's the big rectangle. What's the area of the big rectangle? 
it's, it's is it? Yeah. That's what the I'm big having. rectangle? Not the big rectangle. The one that you saw. Yeah. So I said, what's the area of the big rectangle? Because that's the one I have to oh, work out first. Oh, so and that's twenty-seven by five. Okay. So now, I then want to take away that inside rectangle. That's the white one you guys are talking about. So shouldn't that be two? Minus. I don't know. Okay. What's your question? Yeah. Um, I have a question mark here because I worked out the inside one, but not the outside. Yep. Um. So what do I get? Hmm. I'll have a look at it in a sec. Maybe you can. I'll put the marking guidelines on here in a second so you can judge. But let me let me finish the working and then you'll see. Okay. Now. Again, I keep on saying this, right? There's all kinds of things you don't have to do, but they're a great idea. Right? So that's why I put them on the working app. So I'm going to put these in brackets here, okay? which you don't have to do, but it makes it clearer what's going on. All right, what's 5 by 27? Can we work it out? Do it in bits. What's 5 times 20? 100. What's 5 times 7? 35. So it's 135. Bless you. Okay. 3 by 25, you go 25, 50, 75. Okay, so then that gives you, you do that subtraction, that's 60, isn't it? That's 60, bless you. Okay. Now, the question was, where, where do we, like, what do I get if I put this amount of work in, okay? Well, I think we already established that your diagram, if it's reasonable, that gets that one mark, okay? Bless you. Now, the second mark is for this line. Okay. Now, you need to have the whole line. What are we testing here? What's actually being assessed? What I'm looking for is to see that you understand how to convert a diagram and get the useful bits out of it in terms of numbers. Okay. So you can see what kinds of things are going on there. Number one, you need to know the area of a rectangle. Okay. Number two, bless you, you've got to know there's two rectangles. Right. Number three, You've got to know to subtract one from the other. So I'm looking for all of those things in that whole mark. Okay? So for instance, if all you've got is like that inside rectangle, okay? What have you demonstrated? You demonstrate you know what the area of a rectangle is, and that's good. But I'm looking for more than that for this one mark. Okay? I kind of think about it like high jump. You know, high jump, you've got the bar set there, and you're like, can I jump 150 centimeters no, or not? And I'm I'm pretty bad, right? So it doesn't matter how close I get to 150, if I don't get over the bar, I don't, I don't get it, right? So it's, it's yes or no, in a real sense. Shh. Last mark here. How would you explain? How would you describe what that last mark is about? Like, obviously, it's one mark for that answer, but what is someone demonstrating that they understand when they go from here to here? Yeah. Uh, okay, so number one, I'm looking for these units. That's really important. If you, said, if you said 60 meters, then that's wrong. There's a misunderstanding there. So number one, I want the square. What else? Like, I mean, I want you to try and picture if someone can get this line, but they can't get this line. What's going on? People did. People got this far, but they didn't get there. What's the difference between those two students? Well, apart from units, like suppose they couldn't get the 60, they got some other well, number down here. They didn't practice everything. Yeah, there's something going on in here. They've done their arithmetic wrong, right? Or they've stuck into their calculator incorrectly, okay? So that's the difference, that's the evaluation. Okay, so there's the third mark, and that's how you set it up.